I wanted an explosion, like, in my mind. All right, let's dive right into this view. I'm talking about the quarry today, the big game that Supermassive has been working on. They teamed up with 2K. They got all this crazy stuff going on. We've been watching it for months, like what is gonna happen here with this game? Is it gonna be great? Well, we know it's gonna be great because it's super massive, but I mean, what exactly are we in for? It dropped on Friday. I'll be talking about just my initial thoughts. This is not gonna be a spoiler review, spoiler free, just like, Boom, right off the cuff, what do I think of the quarry? Played it over the weekend, and how do we do? So, right off the bat, this game looks beautiful. I mean, just take it like five seconds and you can appreciate that beauty. Let's talk about Supermassive. They always knock it out of the park graphically. Like, I didn't have a question as to how great this game would look. And my gosh, does it look absolutely stunning. So, hats off to them for that. Just another classic project. Their face capture animations are wonderful. The emotion in the characters really help to tell that story. This is way more of a cinematic experience, which is awesome. They were talking about that. The camera angles really add to that drama, and that was fantastic to see that. And then, of course, you have the copywritten tracks, which is something they don't do too much in the dark pictures but there's copywritten music in this one and it really just punches and hits that cinematic thing right on the head. Like, like you really feel like you're watching and playing like a whole unique experience when you're playing this game between the graphics and the face capture and the camera angles and the music. They really nailed it home there. So big props to Supermassive for that. It's super, like I said, just absolutely beautiful, like absolutely. Now going down to the gameplay of this game, it is a little bit different for those of us who'll be coming off of House of Ashes. So House of Ashes was the first game that Supermassive did in the Dark Pictures anthology that did not have fixed camera angles. And I must say, I guess I got kind of used to that because that's like the story experience that I've been most recently dealing with here. But um, this game, the quarry goes back to fixed camera angles and it's kind of like wishy-washy like i get it and i don't get it like it really helps you tell that story and really helps like hold back the fear and the scares when you limit what the player can see so i absolutely understand why they do it but it is slightly um frustrating to do to go back to fixed camera angles after having been able to freely control the camera just a game ago so that was kind of like it. Like I said, it's a hit or miss. It's 50-50. I don't, I don't hate the fact that the cameras are fixed again, but I don't love it either. It's just a part of the game. It's, it's I guess, an artistic choice that they, that they chose in order to tell this story. So, uh, so that's, that's what I'm going for with that. The environments are much bigger in this game. They are way more immersive and way more expansive, which is great. Like, when I walked into this and I realized that they were teaming up with a publisher as big as 2K, I kind of had pretty big expectations. And so the fact that there's bigger environments to explore was certainly a big plus for me. Um, I will say though that the environments, despite their immersion and their expansion, they seem kind of empty. Like on my first playthrough, I probably got I think 72% of collectibles the on my first playthrough and I wasn't necessarily playing to collect everything. Like I'll, I'll absolutely do that eventually, but my first playthrough I was more or less just playing the game the way I felt like I would play it. My first playthrough is always my true playthrough. For me, like I said, they're more expansive and it was fun to just go around and see the detail that they put into this world, but there was very little to actually collect and interact with, which is a bit disappointing on my part. Also talking about gameplay, um, the player management. So I played, I did my first playthrough with a small group of friends. So we did a movie night playthrough. And I must say that their cast management for this particular game was not that good. There's at least three characters who are pretty well written off at some point in time in the story. And so like if you're playing this with a bunch of friends, you got like three people who are just sitting there watching the rest of the game because their character got written off. Mind you, all of our characters survived in the playthrough. So I got to see a playthrough where no one died. So it's not like somebody died and they're like, oh crap, now I'm just sitting here watching this game happen. It's like, oh well, my character apparently just got written out of the story. So now I'm gonna sit here and watch the game happen. So I will say that that was pretty disappointing. Like I was super pumped and super excited when I heard that there was an eight man cast. I have been asking for a Dark Pictures anthology game that's just bigger and grander and, and bigger on every sense that you could imagine. And I was sure that the quarry was going to be it. But at the end of the day, I felt like the amount of significant characters in this cast 
probably about matches the amount of significant characters in a Dark Pictures game. Like I said, there was three of them that felt like they were pretty useless, so we might get like six characters instead of five, but like I said, at the end of the day, their player count and how they manage those players was not my favorite. I didn't hate it, but like I said, if you're doing, if you're doing a movie night, it's kind of clunky. I'm sure if you do a solo story, which I'm working on my solo playthrough right now, I'm sure if you do a solo story, the story flows well and great and it feels good to play. But as far as the actual ensemble cast management for that movie night, it was a little rocky. I know it feels like I'm nitpicking pretty hardcore right now, but there are, I feel like, some missing components in this game. You can no longer check on your relations with other players which was to me like a pretty significant part of the franchise like you press the little back bin back menu button or whatever you look at how you interact with your players like does does bobby like you does joey like you like do anyone like you like what's going on there but there's none of that in this game and then just a little more nitpicking there in the fact that like in the menu i don't think there's any way to look at my collectibles in the menu and then on top of that like after you fi finish your first playthrough you get scene selection like okay that's that's how it always works i'm fine with that but then when i go back to do scene selection it doesn't let me create a new save it just automatically automatically deletes the old save and so i feel like there's a lot of kind of clunky gameplay mechanics there's a lot of things that they got us used to in these games that aren't present in this one and then like just this really tiny, small little problem that I had was with the um, 80s outfit DLC. So I went out and bought the DLC because I, you know, I thought it was kind of cool to have a cinematic game that actually allows you to like change your character models. And like, since I was playing with other people, I was like, that'd be cool. Like not only do you pick your character, but you get to pick their outfit too. Like, okay, let's go. Well, they're not available until July. And I don't know if maybe I'm just stupid and can't read internet articles or they just were really bad about explaining that to people. But I had no idea that that was the fact. And so I was a little disappointed when I went out of my way to get these outfits. And then it's like, you got to wait till July. And it's like, I don't even like buying cosmetics and games anyway, but whatever. So, I mean, all in all, like the actual gameplay of the game, it works. It's standard dark pictures gameplay. There's nothing really revolutionary happening here. I was kind of like hoping, like I said, I had high hopes for this one when I saw that they had 2K on board and that's not exactly what I got. My hopes were not dashed, but they weren't exactly completed either. It was just kind of like, okay, well, high hopes, yay. And then it was just kind of like, okay, this is, feels like I'm just playing it longer with more characters, dark pictures game. So that's, that's my thoughts on the gameplay as a whole. Uh, moving right along to characters. Obviously in a story-based game, your characters are going to be the driving factor in your game. Those are the people you control, the people you make the decisions with, and the people that you experience this story through. So the characters have a huge impact on what we're doing here. And I have to say they're kind of blah. I was not really grabbed by any of the characters. I didn't hate any of them either. They just all kind of happened. Like um it was kind of like the man of medan cast like there was no characters in man of medan that i really loved and there was no characters that i really hated either they were just there we're playing this game we're going through the experience through their eyes whatever but um i was really kind of bummed out when you give me a cast of eight plus people and i can't really find myself really liking any of them there was one character that i did really like but he was not someone that you can actually play as and so that was once again another kind of bummer. It was like, wow, how is my favorite character not one of the playable cast? That's kind of so, bad. So, like I said, not horrible characters. They're just not, none of them were overly interesting. None of them leapt off the page. None of them, like, left me thinking about that character after the fact. They were all just kind of there. And some of them were pretty useless, but... Like I said, not overly blown away by the characters in this one. So of course, we've got to take a moment to talk about the story. Once again, I am avoiding spoilers. There will be another video deeply diving into this game's story at another time. Right now, I am just solely focused on my initial thoughts of the story as a whole and a broad scale. And I gotta say, we got beef with the story, guys. I've got a lot of beef with the story. More to come on that later, but it was not at all really what I had wanted out of this. Um, wasn't horrible, but it was disappointing. And, and like I said, I think this comes 
off the back of me having really high hopes for this game. Like, I was really hoping that it was gonna be this massive, over-the-top, grand-scale thing, and what we got was more or less, like I've said before, just a longer Dark Pictures game. And like for those of us who are already fans of Dark Pictures, like you will enjoy this game. It's worth playing, it's fun, and you'll have a good time. I mean, the quarry is fine, it is absolutely worth playing. It's just, I think for me, walking into it, I had really high hopes. I really thought it was gonna be something big and grand and revolutionary to the story game genre and really like that next level entry. And I don't think that's what we got out of it. It just feels like a more expansive, bigger and grander version of the Dark Pictures anthology. Like I wouldn't mind the quarry being like the next stage in the Dark Pictures. Like when we get to season two, if all of season two Dark Pictures games look like the quarry, that would be great. But like for a standalone game that's not within the Dark Pictures thing, for it to be the quarry, it just wasn't what I was wanting. Like I said, I had much higher hopes for where this could go and what this could be. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely worth playing. It was a great experience. And if you're already a fan of Dark Pictures or of Supermassive Games, you will enjoy this game. But if you were someone like me who followed it since its announcement and was really like getting ready for something big and grand, you may not have that big and grand experience that you were expecting. That's just what I'm saying. Like I said, I'm not trying to say that it was terrible, I'm not trying to say it was awful, it was just, not what I was expecting. In terms of the story specifically, not trying to actually reveal anything or do any spoilers here, I would rank it, like, obviously everyone's story ranking is going to be different, so, I mean, if you don't know how I feel about these stories, it might not mean very much to you, but I would say, personally, for me, this story is better than Man of Medan, but worse than the rest of their projects. Like, I would definitely put Little Hope's story above this one, and I would definitely put uh, House of Ashes' story above this one, along with Until Dawn. But, um, like I said, not to say that this story is absolute garbage, it's just... I really think I got my hopes up too much for this one, and that, that sucks. And it wasn't a great feeling to be done with it and just be gonna be like, all right, that was fun, what's next? I, w I wanted to like have my mind blown. I wanted an explosion like in my mind, but that's not what I got. So my overall thoughts on this game, we talked about characters, we talked about story, we talked about gameplay, and we talked about graphics, and it is an absolute solid entry for Supermassive Games. Thank you all for making this because it was a great experience. Um, like I said, once again, we got beef with the story. I'm gonna I'm a tear that up like I always do. Characters. They were not doing it for me. They were not leaping off the page. Like I said, I didn't hate any of them, which is always a good thing. Like you don't want to play a game and hate the characters, but you want to have at least one character you can latch onto, gosh darn it. So um, characters were kind of there. Graphics, they blew it out of the park. They always blow it out of the park. They can go, they cannot go wrong with graphics in a super massive game. Um, the actual gameplay, it's, it's standard story-based gameplay if you're familiar with the super nat, with, with Supermass's formula. So it's nothing, they're not really anything revolutionary there. They introduced a couple new QTEs, but it's not like, whoa, this is a game-changing QTE. It's just like, okay, something else to get used to. It keeps the game fresh, keeps it interesting. I can appreciate that. Like I said, character management, if you're planning a movie night, be aware of the character management. It's not great. Um, so maybe have some like side stuff for your party to do while they're sitting around and watching or maybe they really enjoy watching and that's fine. All in all, like I said, solid game, good play. It was, it's absolutely worth playing, especially if you already like story-based games. Like don't pass this up. Don't sleep on the quarry, but, um, just maybe don't walk into it with as high hopes as I did because I really wanted my mind to be blown and that's not what happened. So a solid 7.1 game, like let's, let's go guys, let's see what's next, let's expand from here, and I love Supermassive, I will play everything that they make, but uh, I'll see you guys next time and let me know what you think.